Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good Hi. evening, teacher. Good to see you. Okay, let's begin. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Let's do this. Okay. I'm going to share the screen with you now. There it is. Okay, everybody. Um, welcome once again. I'm just, uh, as usual, first things first, I have to pass the attendance list. Okay, when you hear your name, please let me know. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher present. Good evening. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Good evening. Hello. There are two Ana, Ana, Ana Mendozas here. Ana Filomena and Ana Yanira. Okay. Um, Andrea Michelle Selva Selva. Andrea Michelle Selva Selva. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Present teacher. Welcome. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Hello teacher, good evening. Hello. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina e Hernández Cuellar. Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Uh, welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Good evening, present. Good evening, welcome. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Good evening, teacher, present. Hello. Jose Eraivin Enriquez. Present, teacher. Welcome. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Present, good evening. Good evening. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present teacher. Welcome. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Noemí Alicia Estrada Palacios. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Hi there. I'm here. Hello, welcome. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present. Welcome. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andres. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andres. Okay. Um, Calling some names again. Well, we have three chat entries here. Alejandro Quintanilla is here. Cesar Alexander Ramirez also. Present teacher. Okay, welcome. Gabriela Sequeira also. Present. Thank you. Okay, uh, Andrea Michelle Selva Selva. Andrea Michelle Selva Selva. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. 
Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andes. Andrés, perdón, Andrés. Jan, Janet Yanira. Okay. All right, let's begin. Everybody, welcome once again. It's good to see you. Uh, this is Advanced English 2, and it's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service once again. This is session number two, and today, September the 26th of 2023. So, everybody, be welcome. Um, first things, first thing we're going to do today, we're going to have a review on the topic we started yesterday. What was that? Okay, it is the infinitive and gerund phrases. Okay, this is a review. No new information at this point. Okay, it's uh, pretty much the same we did last night. So you have to use it plus the verb be, which is usually contracted. You say it's. After that, you have to use an adjective or an adjective and a noun. And after that, you use an infinitive phrase. And all that combination is often used to comment on behavior. Okay. Now, these sentences can also be restated with gerund phrases like this. You say it's rude to ignore your conversation partner. You use it's, and after that, you use an adjective, which is rude, and after that, you use a to infinitive, which is to ignore. It's rude to ignore. Always remember, it's, after that comes the adjective, after that comes the to infinitive form. Sometimes in the adjective, you have adjective and noun, okay, because uh, nouns often go with adjectives. So the example is, it's rude to ignore your conversation partner. So if you want to say it in a different way, you can you can do it by using a gerund phrase. And you use the gerund phrase at the beginning. What is a gerund phrase? The gerund phrase is a phrase that begins with a gerund. And what is the gerund? A gerund is the nominal form of a verb. In other words, it's a verb that functions as a noun. It's a verb that functions as a subject or an object. So you can say, instead of saying, it's rude to ignore your conversation partner, you can simply say, ignoring your conversation partner is rude. Now, something that I want you to notice here is that uh, the gerund becomes the subject of the sentence. Therefore, you cannot use it again. You say, ignoring your conversation partner, and then just go with the verb be, is rude. Okay, but don't say, ignoring your conversation partner, it's rude. There will be a problem right there because the subject will be repeated. So you have to be careful with that. Second example, it's a good idea to try out different topics. So you have it's, then you have a, which is a terminer, and then you have good idea. You have an adjective and a noun. And after that, you have the two infinitive form. It's a good idea to try out different topics. You can also express this by saying try now different topics is a good idea. Okay, uh, the word considered it may also follow the verb be in this kind of sentence. For example, it's considered impolite to, to interrupt people. Okay, it's considered impolite to interrupt people. Or you can say interrupting people is considered impolite. Okay, interrupting people is considered impolite. Now, these sentences may also include the phrase for plus a person or a noun. It's customary for the complementer to say nice things about others. So you have it here. It's plus an adjective, customary. And then you have for plus a person or pronoun for the complementer. And after that, you use the to infinitive to say nice things about others. If you want to restate it, you can say saying nice things about others is customary for the complementer. Nothing new at this point. This is exactly the same topic we studied yesterday. Now, I want you to pay close attention because this is not in the, it's not in the manual. I think I'm going to improve, um, uh, let's see, the sharpness of the image so that it looks a little bit better. I'm going to go with 25%. Oh, sorry. 25%. Okay, now it looks a bit better. Okay, now this is not in the manual and it's probably not in the platform either, so pay close attention. Now, this is the second part of the explanation. In a sentence with it's plus an adjective and infinitive, it is possible to follow the adjective with for and a pronoun or noun, which is the same thing I just mentioned right here. It's difficult for her, that's a, that's a pronoun for her, to talk about her feelings openly. Okay. For example, in my case, I, I can say, and this is real, by the way, uh, it's, it's difficult. And then I say, for me, okay, that's valid because I use for and then an, 
a person, that person is me, for me to start a conversation, conversation with a stranger, okay? For me, this is very difficult, okay? I'm kind of shy. So it's, it's difficult for me to start the conversation with a stranger. Okay, and even when I know the, the person, it's difficult for me to start the conversation because it's, I'm an introvert. Okay, so it's, it's, it's kind of hard. All right, so you have it here. You have it's, after that, you use difficult, which is uh, the adjective, and then you can use for and a person, for me. The, you can directly state the name of the person. You can say directly who the person is, or you can use a pronoun, like in this case, for me. And then you have to use a two infinitive to start a conversation with a stranger. So the second example is it's customary for North Americans to use frequent eye contact. Okay, people look at you in the eyes, okay, when they're talking to you. Now, this is new. Pay close attention. For sentences in the negative, you have to use not plus the infinitive or not plus the gerund. The negative form is very easy. Just use the particle not before the two infinitive and the particle not before the gerund, like this. There are two examples. It's considered rude not to thank people who give you gifts, okay? So to make it negative, you just have to use not before the two infinitive. And if you're beginning the sentence with a gerund phrase, then you use not before the gerund phrase. In other words, you, you begin the sentence with not. Not thanking people who give you gifts is considered rude. All right, that's the negative form. Okay, so not thanking people who give you gifts is considered rude. So how do you form the negative? Very easy, it comes right before the two infinitive, you use not right before the two infinitive or you use not right before the gerund. Pretty simple, no more variations than that. Okay. Um, also, adjectives of feeling like glad, happy, sad, pleased cannot be used with its plus adjective infinitive structure. Instead, the sentence needs to say who has or doesn't have these feelings. Now, example, most parents are both happy and sad to see their children grow up. You cannot say, I mean, it will be very strange for you to say it's, uh, and I'm going to use um, quote unquote, you say it's, uh, it's happy, okay, to see children grow up, okay? This is considered incorrect, okay? So what is the rule here? Adjectives of feeling like glad, happy, sad, please, are not usually used in this way. You cannot use this, this form, it's plus adjective plus infinitive structure. You don't say it's happy to see children grow up. That's That would be weird, okay? Even if you say it in Spanish, it's, es alegre ver crecer a los niños. That, that's kind of weird, right? Maybe you can say it, okay, by expressing your feeling. You can say something like, uh, uh, for example, uh, like, like the example you have right here, most parents, sorry, most uh, parents are happy to see their children grow up. Okay, now this is appropriate. This is good, okay? Now, this doesn't mean that there aren't any exceptions, okay? I have very often heard that people say, for example, it's sad, okay? That's common, informal, but common. Okay, you can say it's sad to see homeless people, right? I'm not going to use quotation marks because it's sad to see homeless people. According to this rule, normally you cannot do it. However, I have to tell you, based on my own experience, a lot of people talk like this. You can say it's sad to see homeless people, okay? But again, if you want to be a bit more formal, you should probably say, um, uh, I feel sad, okay? when I see homeless people, okay? That will be more appropriate. So as a general rule, okay, when you have adjectives of feeling like glad, happy, sad, or pleased, uh, it's best not to use this structure. It's plus adjective plus infinitive, okay? It doesn't sound natural. So just, just for you to know. 
before we continue, do you have any questions about this? Ah, by the way, because this is not in the book. I mean, this is not in the manual. I have to send it to you. This is extra material. So let me find the, the group over here. Um, I'll send it to you via WhatsApp. Okay. Just a moment. Okay, uh, Jose Raibin. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I have a question related to the platform. Platform. The, the uh, yeah, the sentence number three. Which which In, section? Let me check. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Now let's check 1.2. 1.2, one yeah. Okay. 1.2 is sentence the sentence seven. number three. I tried to do, to do it uh, by myself, but when I gave up, I tried to type what you gave us, mm -hmm. the instruction you gave us yesterday, but still it's wrong for me. I don't know where the mistake is because I've I've checked letter by letter and side by side, but I don't know where the mistake well, is. Uh, the answer should be this. It's the one asking someone's age is often considered rude. Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, is it's often considered rude. To uh, ask someone's age. Yeah. Okay. This is someone's, it's often considered, considered rude to ask someone's age. This, this should be the answer. Um, question, are you sure you're using, let's see if there's like an extra space or something here, because sometimes that can happen, right? If there's an extra space or something. This is the answer that's supposed to be there. Uh, yes, I'm gonna Madeline. try once again. Okay, but uh, one, one thing is apostrophes. Um, are you sure you're using the apostrophe? Because sometimes, it, and this is a very common mistake, okay? Sometimes people say, use this. They say, uh, for example, right here. This is an accent, okay? So uh, if you're using an accent, that will be wrong, okay? Just saying, okay, because it's a very common mistake. Sometimes, sometimes uh, people say like, I don't know what's wrong. Sometimes it is because we're using an accent instead of an apostrophe. The apostrophe is the key right next to zero. You know, the numbers uh, on the upper part of the keyboard. So should be this one right here. It's a possibility. Well, the, the other sentences are okay. So uh -huh. uh, what I try to do is copy the apostrophe because, uh, well, I thought maybe maybe the the this symbol is wrong. And even doing that, the sentence is st still wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Believe me, I gave up. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I'm seeing that yeah, because I'm. Too. Yeah, apparently we need to. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing this because I have access to the answers directly. I have access to the answers in the platform. But even, uh, and you're right, even entering the answer that is suggested here. It's taken as wrong. I'm gonna have to report this, okay? Because yeah, something something's really weird. Um, let's see, just one more time. Ana Filomena and then Madeline. Same problem? Uh, yes, the same problem, but same problem. I have a uh, problems in another because I I mm -hmm. am advanced in the platform. Okay. But I have uh, some mistake in some uh, exercise and I want to know if I can ask you. Yeah, totally. Or... But uh, which, which exercise is that? For example, I have a problem in 1.8. 1.8? 1. Yes. Let's the number see. 5, 7, and I don't know if... Five, seven, and eight. Okay. All right. Okay. We, we can do it, but the thing is that if we address that right now, we're pretty much giving the answer to everybody. Yes, <laughs> but, I but know. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. that, that, that's the reason that I am I, was, uh, I am told you that, that uh -huh. if I can 
told you <laughs> uh -huh. but then is the the problem that I have in my in the exercise because uh -huh. I am in the in the part number three to the uh -huh. to the platform uh -huh. but I only have mistakes in the eight point eight two point two and two point twelve. Uh, is that like section number two? I am in this moment. I am in the in the in the in the in the two point eleven. Two point eleven. Okay. Well, yes. that's <laughs> that's far yes. ahead right now. No, okay. <laughs> I am advancing the platform. Okay. That that is. So okay. I finish the number three to mm -hmm. the to the platform. But I have a, a lot of is uh, mistake in the mm -hmm. that exercise. Okay, so I, I don't know if my computer is wrong. <laughs> no, I don't think so. The thing is, um, well, we'll have to check those. But but it's best if we go over those next week. Will, will that be possible? <laughs> yeah because yeah. the thing is that ah we have to like keep the sequence of it and then if we start like yeah. jumping from section to section it's going to get confusing yeah, I was thinking uh -huh. but yeah I I'm, I'm 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 totally willing to help you but we should probably just like but wait a I little bit know longer if i can ask to the english corporativo for no, my just, answer um, or i can no, i just, need to mm -hmm. i need to wait for to the develop to the topic uh -huh. Let's let's wait for it, okay? Because you know, in class we can develop the topic, we can talk about it, and I can, I can provide uh, explanation, exercises, and even extra content for it. Okay. Uh -huh. I mean, that that will be I'm waiting. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for your patience, uh, Madeline, and then Janita. So I have the same uh, trouble with on section one. It's uh -huh. To ask someone. Yeah, Say, I'm checking I, that. Yes, I try to different ways, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. Always, like, like, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, I believe there's 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 like an error here in the platform because I'm I'm entering the exact answer that's supposed to be the correct answer. This is actually this is the the the, 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 the let me try something else. Let's see if I try this. No, also incorrect. Yeah, I will have to report this because there's definitely a problem in the platform here. It's often considered rude to ask someone's age. Yeah, there's there, there's something wrong here. Okay, I will report it. I will report it tonight because it, you're right. It doesn't work. No matter what you do, it just doesn't work. And I mean, it's not your fault. Okay, everybody wants to have that correct answer. So I'll report it. And thank you for bringing this to my attention. I thought uh, we will be able to to solve it here, but yeah, there's definitely a technical problem right here. Anyway, uh, Janita. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I need, uh, I I don't done the exercise on platform. Mm -hmm. I need you to help me to understand better the this this lesson okay because uh, please yeah because uh, if we only concentrate in the platform you don't explain the theme or the topic mm -hmm. i think yeah. uh, for example i need to you help me in the uh, the screen is not complete in this moment the screen is not. Uh, could you erase there is that you wrote uh -huh. in the in the last part, teacher? Mm -hmm. uh, when the, uh -huh, when said uh, adjective of feeling blah, 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 mm -hmm. cannot be used with this adjective. Instead, the sentence needs to say who has or doesn't have these feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, which which is the structure then? Ah, well, there isn't like a very specific structure in this case. You can paraphrase it in a way that is simply grammatically correct, just like this. Um, the example here. 
you can say, uh, imagine, it's happy to see children grow up. Okay, according to this, this is incorrect. Okay, that's incorrect. So instead, you can paraphrase it. Um, most parents are happy to see their children grow up. Okay, or you can say parents get a happy feeling. Okay, when uh, they see their children grow up. Or happiness is what you feel when you see your children grow up, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, we don't have like a very specific structure that we can use in these occasions. Mm -hmm. You can simply paraphrase it in a way that is grammatically correct. It doesn't really matter uh, what structure you use, as long as it is logical, of course. Like the and second one. Mm -hmm. We need to, to do a negative form. A negative form. Uh-huh. Where I put not. Mm -hmm not mm -hmm. um let me see uh, for example people are all, mm -hmm. people are always delighted to get compliments let's see um the last part the last part uh-huh people uh -huh. are the always delighted uh -huh. to get compliments yes. um let me think of an example here you you mean using this but also using the negative form uh, Another example. Um, okay, let me see. I can say, uh, all right, I'm thinking of this now. Something like, uh, I am happy, or let me think, I'm happy to not. It's necessary, to it's necessary to use the subject, right? Yes, the subject is yeah. I in this case. I'm happy mm -hmm. to not have to work on Sundays. I'm happy. I mean, you can say not, it like that, but but it's it, it sounds have. uh huh. To not have to work on Sundays. I mean, you mm -hmm. can say it. I'm happy to not have. I'm sorry, not not to it's not have. I'm, I I just made a mistake. I mean, not to. I'm happy not to have to work on Sundays. Okay. Sorry. Uh, that's how you will say it, okay? However, this is not a very, say, common structure, okay? People don't usually talk like that. Uh, probably it will be better if you just said, I'm happy I don't have to work on Sundays, okay? That sounds much more natural. Mm -hmm. uh... Uh, for example, um, the fara fanatics uh, sometimes don't enjoy the the play or the a game. You mean uh, like a match, uh -huh. a sports match? Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. Uh huh. Deal. But that's the thing. If you express it like that, it sounds overly complicated. It's better probably just to say something like uh, fans are unhappy uh -huh. when their their team loses. Yes. Okay. I mean, you can probably use a, a structure like this, but it sounds overly complicated. So um, uh -huh. it's probably better. But it's correct or not, teacher? I don't think so. I mean, the thing is that it might be correct but people don't use it. And when people don't use the structure often, okay, it sounds unnatural. That automatically okay. makes it like incorrect to most people's ears, okay? Mm. So let me think of, I, I don't even we know can, how to express this in that way. Uh -huh. Fans aren't happy when their team loses, or you can just say fans are happy uh -huh. uh, when, okay. Happy, imagine that we say something like, fans aren't happy to see their team lose, okay? Mm -hmm. Fans aren't happy to see their team lose. Uh, 
you can probably say something like fans are happy not to see their team lose. Grammatically, it may be correct, but again, people don't don't usually talk like this. It sounds overly complicated. Uh huh. To use the negative form this way. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. weird. Sounds really weird. Uh huh. That's the thing. I mean, it may be grammatically correct, but at the same time, people people will probably ask you like, "Why do you talk like that?" <laughs> That's the thing. For me, it's confused, teacher. Uh -huh. Sounds 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 confusing more. actually. Sounds confusing, but don't worry. We we're gonna do some practice right here. I need to read more. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. Teacher. Yes. Uh, maybe who's talking? maybe what? Arriving. Okay. Hi. Maybe what she wants to say. Mm -hmm. She can say the same thing with different words. For example, using the word sad mm -hmm. and don't using happy. You say fans are sad to see their team lose. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, that, that will probably sound a little bit more natural. Okay. Fans are sad to see their team lose. Okay. But even saying that, okay, um, it's, it's probably much more common to say fans are not happy to see their team lose. That I will say is is probably the expression that most people will use in this in these circumstances. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> All right then. Exercise time. What are we going to do? Rewrite the sentences using infinitive or gerund phrases. Okay. First one is it's important to make a good first impression. So, using a gerund phrase, you have making a good first impression is important. What about number two? Arriving late for an appointment is inappropriate in most countries. How about this one? Now you have to use it's plus an adjective plus to infinitive. What do we have? If uh, somebody wants to participate, okay, Alejandro. Uh, microphone, Alejandro. <laughs> I'm sorry, teacher. All, all habits, all habits never die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. It's inappropriate to arrive late for an appointment in most countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Uh, or you can start by saying, in most countries, it's inappropriate to arrive late for an appointment. Okay. okay. In yeah. Most countries, so. Yeah, but but it's correct okay. in the end. In most countries, it's inappropriate to arrive late for an appointment. Thank you, Alejandro. Okay. Uh, what about okay. number three? It's it's fairly typical for college students to get a party, to get to a party late. Jenny Elizabeth. Okay. I think it's uh, getting to a party late is fairly typical for a college students. Getting to a party late is fairly typical for college students. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Jenny. Um, what about number four? It's considered rude not to be punctual for a din dinner party. How about this one? If you want to participate, please raise your hand. Now look, it's considered rude not to be punctual for a dinner party. Reina Isabel, sorry, Miss Romero, I meant. Okay. Okay. Not being punctual for a dinner party is considered for. Not, sorry. Not being punctual for a dinner party is considered rude. Okay, that's right. Not being punctual. You can see it here, both negative forms. It's considered rude not to be punctual for a dinner party. And if you want to use a gerund phrase, you say not being punctual for a dinner party is considered rude. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Romero. Um, what about number five? Keeping the conversation going is easy for Elise. Uh-huh, who wants to try? No one can't believe this. Um, somebody wants to participate. Um, would you like to try? Raise your hand, please. Okay, Maritza Isabel Mendez. Hi, guys. 
Okay. Um, it's going to keep mm -hmm. easy. Hmm. It's going to keep well. Um, a tip. Remember that you use it's, and after that you use an adjective. And then for the person, and then the two infinitive form. So you say, it's what? It's, uh, it's, um, going to, going to? Mm, well, unfortunately, no, it, going it, is, it, uh huh? Yeah. The conversation. Can can you repeat it, please, from the beginning? Uh, so yeah, it is going. No, it is. Uh, keep the conversation. Mm, no, unfortunately, no. After it, we need to use an adjective. May I try, uh, teacher? Okay, Jose, please. It's easy for Elise to keep the conversation going? Yeah, it's more like it. You have, it's easy for Elise to keep the conversation going. So we use it's, after that the adjective, which is easy, and then the person for Elise, and after that the two infinitive to keep the conversation going. Uh, thank you, Jose, and thank you, Maritza, for your participation. What about number seven? It's good form to bring a small gift to a dinner party. It's good form. It's like good manners. That's that's pretty much the meaning of that. Okay, so um, who wants to try this one? What about number six? Number six. Okay, Ana Filomena. <laughs> you can say that, Miss Romero. I I'm am sorry? This, the next. Ah, so who, who talked? Ah, it was Miss Romero. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all right. No, I just was asking because you said number seven instead of number six. Okay, so um, so 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 which one do you want to take? Do you want to take number six or number seven? I'm a bit confused. <laughs> okay, I'll do. It. Um, okay, number six. In some places, mm -hmm. is uh, offensive. Uh, to show uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I skipped one. Okay. I'm sorry. I skipped one. So yeah, yeah there was... sorry, sorry. Okay. I, I got confused. I'm sorry. Showing the bottom of your feet is offensive in some places. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So can you say it, please? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> in some places, um, it's offensive to show the bottom of your feet. Okay. It's uh, in some places it's offensive to show the bottom of your feet. Yeah. Or you can say it's offensive to show the bottom of your feet in some places. Okay, that's also possible. But yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Romero. Thank you very much. Okay, again, I apologize that I skipped one and I got confused for a second. Ana Filomena, do you want to take number seven? Or was it number six that you wanted to take? I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad, okay. Or, um, or Noemi Alicia? Maybe number seven, it's good form to bring a small gift to a dinner party. A good form in this case, the, the word form has many meanings, okay? But in this case, it's like a good habit, okay? It's a conventional behavior. That's what we're talking about. So, Noemi Alicia, number seven. Uh, bring a small gift to a dinner party, it's good. Good form, right? But can, can, can you can you repeat the beginning of the sentence, please? Just the beginning. Bring. Is it bring or bringing? Bringing. Bringing, I-N-G form, yeah. You have bringing a small gift to a dinner party is good form, okay? It's good it's, form. It's good conventional behavior. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Okay, now Jose Arturo, then Byron, and then Alejandro. So um, thank you, Noemi. Uh, Jose Arturo, number eight. Uh, talking about politics is sometimes risky, <laughs> okay? Yeah. It, it's sometimes risky to talk about politics. It's sometimes risky to talk about politics, or it's risky to talk about politics sometimes. It's also possible. 
thank you, uh, Jose Arturo Ramirez. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Okay. Um, if you have seen the movie, it's on Netflix, I believe. Okay, Byron. Number uh, nine. It's customary for parents to brag nine. about their children. Yeah, number nine. Just making sure I'm not skipping another one. Bragging about their children is customary for parents. Okay. Bragging about children. I will I will probably remove the word there because you haven't mentioned who these kids um uh who whose kids these are. That's why I'm removing the word there at the beginning. So bragging about children is customary for parents. I believe it sounds a bit more natural if you remove the word theirs. Okay. Thank you, Byron. Alejandro, number 10. Calling to thank the hottest hostess, I'm sorry, the day after the party is a nice idea. The okay, hostess is, is the host, but the lady in this case. Okay. Uh, it's, an, it's a nice idea to call to bank the hostess the day after a party. Yeah. It's a nice idea to call to thank the hostess the day after a party. That's correct. Okay, teacher, thank but you. I, I have a, I have a, my pleasure, teacher, but I have a, a question. Sure. Uh, what, uh, which is the, the, the natural uh, pronunciation of bringing? Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. I will this... probably have to look it up. I mean, the thing is that, have you seen the IPA symbols? Okay, that they are not in the keyboard. That's why I have to look it up here because I don't have it. IPA. Okay, so you have bringing. The thing is, the pronunciation is, uh, th this sound can be a bit difficult to uh, produce or create or recreate, okay? But it's like a combination between the sound n, n and the sound g, okay? So it's the sound that you do with the back of your throat and it goes like mm, okay? That's the sound. So you say bringing, bringing. It's not bringing, that will be incorrect. It's bringing. So just let me check. I'm consulting on the web about the International Phonetic Alphabet because I want to get the, the right uh, symbol. For some reason, I can find it. Ah, here. Okay. Just let me find the symbol because as you know, they are not in the keyboard, so. And I had no idea <laughs> you were going to ask about that. So um, where is the symbol? Okay, right here, right here, right here, right here. Found it. Okay. All right. So it's this sound. Okay. This sound is kind of like a combination between this sound and the sound. Okay. This is... Where is it? This is the sound n, n, and this is the sound g, g. Okay. So when normally when you have a word like this one, uh, sing or bring, okay, you have ng combination. When you have ng combination, you don't pronounce these two sounds separately. You don't say sing, or you don't say bring. Okay, that's incorrect. Instead, you have to use this other sound, which is um, mm, um, mm, and then you say sing, bring. It's a bit difficult. Okay, sing, bring. Okay, that's uh, let me see. Imagine you have the word, this word, say, how do you say cantante in English? It, when people are learning English, most people say, you say singer, singer, but that is wrong pronunciation. The right pronunciation should be singer, singer. That's the right pronunciation, singer, singer, okay? But you have to be careful with this sound because it is close to this other sound. And if you pronounce this, then you will say a completely different word. It's not the same to say singer than say sinner, okay? Sinner is different, right? Singer is cantante, sinner is pecador. Mm -hmm. Okay, so two different words. So you have to be careful with the pronunciation right there because they are very, very close. Okay, this is the sound, mm, 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 and this is the sound, mm, mm, mm. It's, they're different sounds. Okay, and the same thing happens with bring, bring. So you say, bring, 
bringing, okay? Uh, mm. You have it here. Calling, no, where is it? Uh, bringing, ah, number seven. Bringing, bringing a small gift to a dinner party is good form, okay? Okay. Uh-huh. You. You're welcome. <laughs> it's like a super uh, short pronunciation lesson right there. 846, I can't believe this. I okay. missed your question, Alejandro. Ah, you have a question. Okay, what's your question? Uh, who said that? Ah, Filomena. Ana Filomena. <laughs> okay, so, sorry, Ana Filomena. I sorry. only say to Alejandro that was an amazing, amazing question. An amazing question. Oh, ah, oh okay. <laughs> An amazing question. Yeah, totally yeah. unexpected. But yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. Some extra practice right here. Write sentences with infinitive phrases using the words below. So you have this. Tom... Always happy, loan money to his friends. When they say, hey, Tom, I need money. Can you, you know, just give me some and I'll give it back to you next week? And Tom is always like, ah, yeah, sure. Okay. He's a very generous person. Well, probably not generous because it's just a loan. Okay. He's not like giving away the money. So this is um, practice for this part. Adjectives of feeling like glad, happy, sad, and pleased. Okay. They're not usually... Uh, done with this in adjective infinitive structure. So we're going to have some practice on that right now. So Tom is always happy to loan money to his friends. Okay. You don't say it's happy to loan money to his friends or it's happy for Tom to loan money to his friends. It doesn't sound natural. Okay. So this is an example of, you know, a, a, um, a sentence in which you have to paraphrase the whole idea for it to make sense and for it to sound natural. Now, what about the next one? Wendy, unusual, arrived late to class. Now, unusual is a different kind of adjective. It's not an adjective of feeling. So you can use the structure here. You can say it's unusual for Wendy to arrive late to class. Okay, so it's a good opportunity, okay, for you to practice this. You see, I just used the structure. So um, number three, encouraging struggling students receive good grades in school. Struggling students or uh, students who uh, don't get very good grades, I mean, they try, they try hard, but it's not easy for them, okay? So that's a struggling student, okay? So what do we have right here? What about number three? If somebody wants to try, please raise your hand. Who would like to try? Who's me? Okay, uh, Janet. Okay, all right. Uh, yes, Janet? No? <laughs> no. I believe, I don't know, can you hear Janet? Because I can't. Can you? Can the rest of you? I think there's there's a connection problem right there. Um, well, no, I, I I can't. Sorry, okay, I can't hear you. Um, Jose, did I bring Enriquez? Uh, received good grades in. Sorry. Uh, well, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Sorry, I okay. just coughed. Receive good grades in school is it's encouraging for struggling students. So is it receive or receiving? Re receive. Re well, but if oh. you begin if you begin a sentence, okay, with an action oh, directly. Receiving, receiving. Receiving. Sorry. Okay. All right. So receiving, receiving good grades in uh, Yeah. Please, please, I'm sorry. Receiving good grades in school is encouraging for struggling students. Very good. Okay. Yeah, that's that's it. Uh, can you express the same idea, but beginning with it's, uh, Jose Raibin? Uh, it's encouraging mm -hmm. for struggling students to receive good grades in school. Yeah, it's encouraging for struggling students to receive good grades in school. Okay, yeah, that's right. But the other form you just gave me at the beginning is, is, is equally, is equally um, acceptable. Receiving good grades in school is encouraging for struggling students. Encouraging is the adjective here. This is a participle adjective. It ends in ing. Okay, thank you. Um, what about number three? Men, always glad, okay, help a friend in need. Biden. 
Okay. Min is always glad to help a friend in need. Yeah, that's right. Min is always glad to help a friend in need. That's right, because this is one of those adjectives of feeling. Therefore, you don't say, it's glad for Min to help a friend in need. That sounds really strange. Okay. Thank you, Byron. You got the right answer. Um, what about number, uh, let's see, number number five. Just making sure I'm not skipping any uh, items. Number five, who wants to give it a try? Alejandro and Jose, your hands are up. I don't know if you want to participate or if you forgot to, to lower them. Oh, you forgot to lower it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, what about number five? Me. Nadia y Solina. I try, teacher. Okay. Um, it's a, a many tourists. It's surprising to learn about some America custom. Okay, many tourists. That's a plural noun, so you don't use is. Many tourists are surprising. Are, are uh, but not surprising, but surprised, right? I surprised. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. To learn about to learn about some America custom. Correct. Many tourists are surprised. Okay, to learn about some American customs. Okay. Um, now take a good look at this. Okay, and and this is something that I would like to explain. Now, the adjective here is surprised. This is a participle adjective. Why is it a past participle adjective? Because it's an adjective that takes the form of a past participle. Okay, so what you have right here, and uh, uh, Nadia was right, okay, you have many tourists are surprised, okay, this is the adjective and it's an adjective of feeling, okay, to learn, sorry, about some American customs, okay, I'm zooming out. But what happens if you use another participle adjective, which is surprising? It's a participle adjective too, okay? Because it takes the form of a present participle. If that's the case, then you can use the structure because surprising in this case, is it doesn't tell you how a person, uh, or, or doesn't tell you about the feeling of the person. It's telling you about how the situation is, which is a bit diff different. In this case, you can say, it's surprising, okay, for many tourists to learn about some American customs. If you use the ing adjective, then you can use it, okay? It's surprising for many tourists to learn about some American customs, okay? So um, the difference is here, right? Surprise tells you how the person feels. So it's an adjective of feeling. But surprising is describing how the situation is. The situation of, you know, learning about American customs is surprising. It's not really a feeling, okay? It's describing the situation directly. So in that case, you can use the structure, it's, then the adjective, then for, and the person, and then the two infinitive form. It's surprising for many tourists to learn about some American customs. That's the way it is, okay? Just uh, some extra information right there, okay? What about number six? Students, inappropriate, interrupt the teacher. How about this one? Raise your hand, please. Jose Arturo. You're, you're, yes. you're at the beach today. <laughs> uh, yep. Lucky you. Okay. Uh, um, it's inappropriate to interrupt a teacher um for the student um normally when you use for it's best to use that part of the sentence before the two infinitive structure so can you give it a second try yes uh for a student uh no you remember you begin with it's uh, um it's for a student inappropriate to interrupt a teacher. Okay, but remember that the four students that should come before the two infinitive. 
Okay, um, you're very close, you're very close, but let's see what Nadia has to say about it and then Alejandro. Well, thank you, Jose. Uh, um, I try, I try okay. again. Okay. It's, it's, it's inappropriating. Inappropriate? Uh, inappropriating. It's inappropriating. Um, uh, the, the pronunciation oh. should be inappropriate. 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 It's uh. inappropriate. Are student to interrupt a teacher? It's inappropriate. What's the next word? Are students? Uh, you have to use a preposition. <laughs> okay, it's inappropriate. That for that, that the student. For students. For students, <laughs> that should be for students. Okay, so it's inappropriate for students to interrupt the teacher. Okay, that's that's the one, right? So remember that when you're including a person, okay, right after the adjective, you have to use a preposition for it. But yeah, okay, thank you. Thanks for your participation. Alejandro, you go with the next one. Number seven, new employees, often afraid, ask their bosses for help. It's often afraid. What, what kind of adjective is afraid? No, I don't know, teacher. I, I was I was participating for the number it's, six. <laughs> you wanted to you wanted you, okay, you wanted to give an answer. Teacher. It's a feeling. Yeah, that's right. It's it's an adjective yeah. of feeling. So if, when you have an adjective of feeling like this one, you don't begin the sentence with it's yes. right. So you have to, to begin with the subject or, or with, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. new employees. Uh-huh. New employees are often afraid, afraid uh -huh. to ask their bosses for help. Yes. Yeah. New employees are often afraid to ask their bosses for help. That's right. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Janet, Janita, number eight. Business people, important, be punctual for appointments. Business people, important. Being punctual for appointments is important for business people. Absolutely. Being important for appointments is important for business people. Great. C can you say that's perfect? That's number nine. That's number nine. You skipped number eight. I skipped, I skipped number eight. Okay. Oh my God. What's, what's wrong with me? You know, Why you know, do you the, keep you know, the problem is, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> the, the problem is, is is having a piece of cake right before the class. Okay, that 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 messes with my perception. Okay, now <laughs> the sugar messes with my perception. Okay. Um. Anyway, uh, Janet Janita's answer is good. <laughs> it's actually very good. But uh, Janet, can you um, can you say the same sentence but this time beginning with it's? Um, it's important for business people to be in, uh, punctual for appointments. Bravo, okay, yeah, that's that's the answer. Okay, very good. I mean, both sentences are right. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. I cannot display yeah. it right now because there's the order of animations and I cannot uh, skip it. I mean, I, I skipped items, but I cannot skip the order of animations. Um, who wants to try number eight? Okay, number eight, please. <laughs> Raise your hand. Me. Who, sorry? Me, Romero. Okay, Miss Romero. 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 Okay, but well, always remember, right? <laughs> Raise your 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 virtual hand. Otherwise, I'll get confused. But okay, uh, Miss Romero. Uh, okay, okay. Um, you look, it's you look so comfortable there, Miss Romero. You look so comfortable. I like, am. Like like you could <laughs> fall asleep any moment. Okay. All right. Oh uh, come on, it's nine already. <laughs> yeah. The customer for the request to thank their host. It's customary for dinner guests to thank their host. Thank you. That is correct. And then we have Janet's answer. It's important for business people to be punctual for appointments. Okay, yeah. Thank you, ladies. Um, what about number 10? Aeon Mi, I believe that's Korean or something, never shocked see people eating on the subway. This is the last one. And I guess we're going to end the class with this one because it's already nine. Alejandro. Aeon Mi. Is never shocked to see people eating on the subway. That's right. Shocked is an adjective of feeling. Therefore, you can only say it like this. And me is never shocked to see people eating on the subway. That is correct. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much. I apologize for skipping items twice in the same class. Okay, I promise I'll you know pay more attention next time. I'm going to call some of the names from the list uh, because some of you haven't uh, answered yet. Maybe you have joined the class and you know all this time. Andrea Michel Selva Selva is Andrea Michel. But I see here Gar Garcia Selva. What is that, Garcia Selva or Selva Selva? Andrea Michel. Garcia Selva, teacher. Garcia Selva. I'm going to add a note here because apparently they got your. Um, let's see. Insert note. Uh, su apellido es Garcia Selva. Okay, just for them to know. Thanks, teacher. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So you're here. Welcome. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Is Debbie here? Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Uh, Iris Regina Hernandez Cuellar. He's here, teacher. Okay. Welcome. Uh, Nadia Isolina. Yeah, Nadia, I saw her. She's here. Ricardo. Yes, teacher, present. Totally. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. Is Richard here? Mr. Quijano, Ramirez Quijano, no. Um, sorry. sorry, no. Um, Janet, Janira Rodriguez Andres. I'm here, teacher. Ah, yeah, totally. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, we're going to continue tomorrow. Now, two things. I'm going to report the problem on exercise, uh, on section 1.2, exercise number three, because apparently nothing works and I need to report this. And also I'm going to report uh, Andrea Michel's name, which uh, apparently was uh, typed in incorrectly here. Okay, so uh, keep working on the exercises. Tomorrow we're going to continue and we're gonna uh, start with a reporter speech. Okay, we're a little bit delayed on this, but I believe the practice was necessary. Thank you everybody and um, a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Take good care.